In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I go about making these dungeon walls that work well with any one inch grid system and beyond. I wouldn't say that I've perfected this build just quite yet. I've always been trying to get things a little bit faster because I want that individual brick look, but it's really time consuming to glue together and cut out and whatnot. But if you stay tuned, you'll see a faster way than you've probably seen anybody else do it. So first thing I'm gonna do is cut out squares. So in order to do that, I'm gonna have to cut my bricks one by one. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make little strips of one by one sticks. You'll see, just a second. That's one by one inch. And sometimes these aren't quite square. So I like to go through and cut off all of the sides. Like that, see, now it's square. Think this is gonna be enough? We're gonna find out in just a minute. So I'm gonna set this guide to one centimeter because I like each layer of my walls to be one centimeter high. I'm gonna cut out multiple of these at a time, otherwise it's gonna take forever to cut out. Then we're gonna need half bricks. Rectangles half this size. Probably gonna guess this one a little bit off. And make sure these are one centimeter high as well. So this actually looks like way more bricks than I needed. If you were following along and want to make the exact same thing I'm making, you probably don't need this many bricks. First thing I want to do right now is break these up a little bit more. You don't have to be too accurate. Some of them stick together, that's fine. So, the idea is we're going to use these to make our walls, like so. The half bricks are going to be for the ends and the top, like that. But we're going to need texture. And we are going to be texturing everything with a coffee container with some nuts and bolts inside. We're just going to load this guy up. You can break them up a little bit more as you put them in. Now I'm only going to put it about halfway full. That way when I shake it around, all the nuts and bolts and screws and pieces of metal that I have in here will texture everything really nicely. I just close this guy up and I'm going to shake it for about a minute. Anyway, I thought I was recording me dumping this out, so you missed that. I shook, shook it up for about a minute and then I dumped it all in here just to rehearse everything that you didn't see. And this just added a bunch of texture to all these little squares and bricks. Previously, I have used rocks in a container like this, but I find that makes a bigger mess and gets sand all over. The rocks turn to sand and that gets all over. So I started adding just random pieces of metal, like these old lug nuts and screws from my bathroom wall from replacing the sink. I don't even know where I got some of this stuff. Let's throw it in there and it textures it up real nice without making a big mess. So I'm just gonna line these bricks up like that. You can go ahead and glue the sides of each brick real quick. It's not really required. But if you wanna add just a little bit more stability, feel free to glue them together like that. I usually work on four walls at a time. So I'll just set them up like this. and then go to town gluing them. So, there's that. You can also just jump right on board, add a layer of glue, and then throw these other pieces on real quick. And see, I just do one layer at a time for however many I'm working on. I usually work on about four because there's four in the set. And if you're wondering why I'm using orange hot glue, it's just because I had a little bit left over from making lava pools. If you haven't seen my new way of doing lava, you definitely need to check that video out next. 
I'll have that linked on the screen right now or have it linked in the description, either one. But it's definitely worth checking out if you want to make some lava terrain too. All right, so now we're working on the third layer. And that's just a repeat of the other layer, just alternating. And you'll see how fast this is. Once you get a once you get it down and you aren't talking and you really get into the groove of doing this, you can move pretty fast, especially using both hands. So assembling them is not the, the long part. I'd say cutting out all these bricks is probably the longest part, but assembling them, it's gonna go nice and smooth, be nice and fast. This is definitely the way to do it. See that, that was way fast. So now we're at the top layer and it's gonna be all these half size bricks. I usually grab two and throw them on like this. Or sometimes, it really just depends. And the other thing about these walls is I want them to be slightly ruined. So I'm not gonna completely cover the whole top with bricks. So I'm gonna break one brick in half and glue it to this side and then use the other half on the other side. Like that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to these others. And you can glue like I did there. You can do the same thing and just grab a bunch of these little bricks the same way and get it on there pretty fast, just like that. Pretty fast. It may even be faster than carving and doing all that stuff. So I'm still debating that. I need to time it one of these days and figure out if it's faster to carve it up or just stack them like this. But in my mind, this is the faster and the better looking way. Okay, so for this next step, I'm gonna be using my knife. And you may have noticed, you may not have noticed, I don't know. There's some of these bricks on the side this should have a line in the middle. That way there's a brick on each side. At least it'll look like that. So I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna insert in the middle of those bricks and then I'm just gonna wiggle the knife back and forth. And that prevents us having to do a cut and then go back through with a pen or a pencil or whatever you use. Just use the knife. You don't need to be super detailed, especially with things this small. and add it, like so. And then I'm gonna chip up some of the edges of these. Cause I want them to be a little bit ruined. I like that. And that is the look I'm going for. Now we're gonna be painting it all black and I'm doing that with some of this high endurance black house paint. It dries nice and flat and it hardens everything up nicely. So yeah, I'm just gonna paint these walls. I'm not gonna go over everything too fast. That way I make sure I get in all the cracks and crevices because there's a lot of those in these. But regardless, even though I'm not painting super fast, we'll be done in just a few minutes. And then I'm gonna leave it to dry overnight and I'll get back to these in the morning. So those are painted black. I'm just gonna give these a quick paint job. Gonna be solid gray. And I'm only doing solid gray because I figured that'll go best with most dungeons. I have done some custom orders of these as well. I've added some moss or done the multicolored brick thing. But for my basic set, we just do an overbrush of gray, like that. So I'm gonna hurry and paint all these, then we're gonna do the dry brush. Actually, let's do the dry brush real quick. That's already basically dry because I was doing an overbrush. All right, so normally I go through and paint everything gray, and then I do the dry brush. But because I don't wanna film twice, we're gonna do the dry brush first real quick. So wipe off most your paint and hit that wall. 
you'll notice that I'm going from top to bottom. That's just so it gives it a little bit of a zenithal highlight. All right, and that guy is done. Looks decent, doesn't it? And after I finish painting all these and spray everything with varnish, we'll get those glamour shots. So actually, I got one more thing before we get on with the glamour shots. And that is adding some weight to the bottoms of these smaller pieces. And we do that just so they don't get knocked all over. You can add them to all the pieces if you want, but I like to just add them to these small ones so they don't go all over. And I'm doing that with some number eight half inch flathead screws. And half inch because these are small and it should fit just fine at the bottom of those. And these are heavy enough that they will give enough weight to these and make sure they don't get knocked all over. And I do that just by inserting the screw and drilling it in. And you can't just use a screwdriver, but for me, I do it every day. So I like to use a screwdriver, it saves my hand the issues. There we go. Now, let's get into those glamour shots. 